And the power consumption is really important because you don't want them to heat up if they're on your body because that's yeah. uncomfortable or could burn you, but also because you're operating on a battery, right? So the, yeah. the battery life is a main constraint on the, the operation time and the cost. Of these but do you really need like a clutch on an exoskeleton? Like I always think of that as being more like actuators than clutches. But Yeah, so this is a really interesting avenue to go down in exoskeleton design and biomechanics work. Um, but essentially, one of the things that I did during my PhD with some video on YouTube as well was use the clutches in a um, walking ex exoskeleton huh. that assists you on the ankle. And it replicates uh, the assistance pattern from a, a previous study that showed that you can reduce the metabolic cost of walking by 6% compared to not wearing the exoskeleton with a completely unpowered exoskeleton. So there were no motors, no batteries, nothing. All it was doing was changing your biomechanics as you walked to be By more like efficient. By like locking up at certain times. Exactly. So it was, a, yeah. it was a clutch and spring where it clutched in the spring when your foot's on the ground. So it assists your plantar flexion and dorsal oh, flexion. Interesting. And then it unclutches when your foot is in the air because you need to be able to pick your toe up to not scuff your toe on the ground. Yeah. And the so, spring is fighting against your toe being picked up. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. So uh, it's actually mimicking a lot of what your Achilles tendon and soleus muscles Oh, so you're not just rigidizing your links, you're, you're introducing that spring Springiness, in. Springiness, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. 